Hi, my name is Don Goodsmer. I'm with West System Epoxy. In this video today, I'm going to cover the basics of applying fiberglass cloth. So the thing to think about with fiberglass, you hear, what's fiberglass? It's actually a reinforcing fabric, and we have a number of them up here. This first one that we have, it's called a, uh, a woven roving. So it has uh, what's called a roving, and this is many fiber filaments, continuous filaments that's actually woven together. And what's next to it is called a knit. So what that is, it's a biaxial glass that I have up here that's run on a plus or minus 45 degree angle with stitching that stitches the two fabrics together. And then right next to it is we have yarns that are woven together and these are lighter weight. We have a six ounce up here and a four ounce, and then a lightweight veil. It's very lightweight fiberglass fabric. Uh, the lightweight fabrics, a lot of times it's used when you wanna really reduce weight. Um, an example would be say if you have a model RC bow or an airplane and maybe you're putting it on the wing of an airplane and that's great for a lightweight glass. And then another example is where maybe you'd have six ounce glass is like a, a cedar strip canoe where you're putting a protective layer on the wood so it doesn't split over time. And then the heavier weight glass is it's called 17 ounce per square yard, the biaxial cloth. This may be used for like, say, if you're repairing the side of a, um, a fiberglass boat, like a hole, where you use multiple layers. There's many different fabrics out there, but West System can be used for pretty much everything that's out there. But I wanna show you a couple different techniques on how you can use them and wet them out no matter what the weight is. Now we're to the stage of applying the epoxy to the surface. We have a lightweight fiberglass cloth up here. That's four ounces per square yard. So anything up to about 12 ounces per square yard is considered lightweight. So this first method is considered putting the fiberglass on the surface while it is dry. And what I mean by that is that the substrate, that it's, there's no epoxy on there, it's all prepped, that you sanded the surface. To get good adhesion, you removed any sanding dust by wiping it off or vacuuming it. What you want to do is once you get the glass all laid out on the surface and made sure that there's no wrinkles, I'm going to pour just a small little puddle of epoxy on the surface. I have some 105 resin with some 207 Special Clear hardener for like if you're clear finishing. And I'm going to take a plastic spreader, just a flexible plastic spreader. And what I'm going to do is run it over the surface at a low angle. So what I'm trying to do is run it over the surface to fully saturate the cloth and make sure that the epoxy is moving over the surface evenly so it's not, there's no shiny spots. So you actually see the weave of the fabric. Because if there was shiny spots, that means that the epoxy is just put on too heavy and where it might actually be wavy or the glass is lifting up off the surface. And that wouldn't be ideal because if you came back and seeing it, that you'd be hitting those high spots. You want to make sure that the glass makes good contact with the surface. The other thing too is as you run the spreader over the surface to fully wet out the glass is you're looking for white spots and that's just an indication that the glass isn't fully saturated. As you work the epoxy on the surface that's spreading it all out, you don't want to overwork the epoxy. The issue with that is the more that you work the epoxy onto the surface spreading it out, you're entraining more air. And the issue with that is the epoxy is actually going to turn cloudy because you have that micro bubbles and trapped air bubbles in the epoxy that's very difficult to, to remove it once it's in there. So we just lightly work it all the way out to the edges and just kind of making sure that the glass makes good contact. So you may actually just want to kind of pull on the outside edge of the glass so it lays nice and flat so there isn't any wrinkles. Then from there, you let the epoxy get kind of tacky, similar to masking tape, then wait about a few hours to recoat the surface. So now on this method, I'm going to apply the epoxy with a roller. We have on our West System line, we have our 800 roller cover. It's a very short nap, thin roller. So the advantage of this roller is when you get epoxy on it, you evenly distribute it over the surface compared to like if you were to brush it on, it's hard to maintain a nice even film over the surface. So what I'm going to do is I have some 105 resin and 207 special clear hardener. As you roll it into the roller pan, you just want to get a, a light even coat of epoxy on the cover and just light pressure over the surface. 
And as long as the epoxy is freshly mixed, so it's real thin and it's not getting hot, it's gonna saturate right through the glass very easily. So it doesn't take much effort. One thing to keep in mind as you're putting the epoxy on the surface, you wanna make sure that you're not putting too much on. You won't actually see the weave of the fabric, but you wanna put enough epoxy on that it penetrates through the glass and the substrate. So say if it's wood, you wanna make sure that that's wet out properly, that it's not absorbing the epoxy away from the glass. So we do talk to customers that have um, canoes that they will actually seal the surface prior. So they'll put, put epoxy on there and let it absorb in. And then from there, sand the surface. So now they have a nice sealed surface then they put the glass on. So just light pressure. And what you're looking to do is just fully wet out the glass and it takes a second. Um, and you're looking to make sure that there's no white spots and that the surface isn't super shiny because if it is, the epoxy's puddling on the surface. So the other thing to keep in mind too, is as I roll the epoxy on, I don't wanna overwork the epoxy into the surface because as you roll, epoxy on the surface it introduces air bubbles. The more that you work it, the more that you entrain air bubbles, it's going to make the surface look cloudy. And I'm going to take a plastic spreader, just a flexible plastic spreader, and what I'm going to do is run it over the surface at a low angle. And from there we'll weigh if we're close to room temperature, right around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll wait about three hours, two to three hours, and let it get like a soft rubber, like initially cured. Then we'll come back, we'll mix up a new batch of epoxy, and we'll roll it on again. We'll roll on a nice even coat and just build up the coats gradually. So I'll move this, this panel out of the way and we can take a look at what we have over here. So this is actually a biaxial glass. This is a, a knit, um, so it's actually stitched together. Um, and this is 17 ounces per square yard. So the method that I'm gonna use here to wet it out is considered the wet method. And what I mean by that is, say we have a substrate. Um, this is just a piece of plywood with Formica on it, but we'll say it's wood. You'll act we'll actually brush on a thin coat of epoxy on the surface then I'll lay the dry glass into that and the epoxy will permeate up right through it. Seeing that the glass is heavier than 12 ounces per square yard, it's best practice to wet it out from both sides that I'm not trying to wet it out from the top. I will still put epoxy on the top to fully saturate it, but I'll wet it out from both sides. And then as I do this, I'm gonna show you a couple different methods on going about wetting it out when you're doing more than one layer. So I have some freshly mixed epoxy right here. So it's all mixed up, ready to go. So from there, if you get a bristled brush, and if you cut the bristles down, it's gonna make it a little bit stiffer and it's easier to kind of drag the epoxy over the surface. We'll just brush an even coat of epoxy on the area here. So now that I have it, a nice even distribution of epoxy on the surface, now I can take my fabric and lay it over top of the surface. And what you're trying to do now is you just want to make sure there's no wrinkles in the glass. So you kind of work it and kind of pull the outside edge. And from there, if you grab your, a, a plastic spreader, we're just going to run this at a low angle over the surface. And now what's happening is the epoxy is permeating right up through it. And as you look down and you look at it, you will see that the glass isn't fully wet out. And the way to know that is you can kind of see white areas where the, the glass fibers are not fully saturated. So now I'll actually take and apply more epoxy to the surface. Just a nice even coat, I can just brush it on. With this mass of epoxy, it's gonna generate heat and mass. So if I pour it out into a roller pan, it increases the surface area of it and you have more time to work with it. The advantage to that is 
when the epoxy starts to generate heat, it get, starts to get sticky and tacky, and it doesn't fully wet out the glass fiber like it would if it was thin and cool. So now that I have it brushed on the surface, nice even coat, I'll come back with my, my spreader at a low angle and I'll just make sure that it's making good contact with the surface, that it's not wavy, and then that it's fully saturated. And as you look here along this edge, just so I don't have any epoxy that drips off the edge, you can kind of see where it's white and it's not thoroughly wet out. Um, that's just an indication if it was on the surface that you're applying it, you just have to put more epoxy in there and work it in. So now I have multiple layers of glass over here. What I'll do is I'll do the same approach here, but then I'll incorporate more layers of glass and show you how to go about doing it. Pour a nice little even coat on the surface and you can even it out with the brush. I'm just running the, uh, the brush over the surface, kind of angling it a little bit here. And that just makes sure that the glass makes good contact with the surface. And we'll just pour more on the surface here. And from there, we'll switch to the plastic spreader, flexible spreader. And this is just running at a low angle, just like we did before. You want to gradually build it up, but fully saturate the cloth. So I'll, I'll squeegee off a lot of the excess, but then I'll come back and squeegee a nice thin, even coat to make it wet for the next layer. So now we got another layer of glass that we'll put on the surface. So the same technique, you're just kind of spreading it out so it evenly saturates all the glass fibers. So now that I got the second layer on, and when you build up more than a couple layers, you start to build some thickness. The big thing is you don't want to entrain a lot of air. And what I mean by that is when the, um, there may be air bubbles of separation of the glass on the surface and you want that glass to make good contact from one layer to the next. So instead of a plastic spreader, I'll actually switch over to a, a grooved metal roller. So these, um, he's got little roller grooves on here. So as I roll it onto the surface, it makes a lot of pressure uh, to force those layers of glass together to wet them out thoroughly. And you can kind of hear the air bubbles kind of work their way out. And now that I have it thoroughly wet out, it's still quite shiny. So what I'll do is I'll come back with my brush and at this top edge, I'll take some of the epoxy and put it at the bottom for my third layer. So it fully wets that out because like I said, there's no reason to put the epoxy on too heavy at the start. You wanna gradually build it up. Um, and the main thing is that you're not entrapping air and then you're not putting more epoxy on than you really need to to fully saturate it. We'll take the, this next layer of dry glass and we'll lay it onto the surface, kind of get it down. Come back with our, our roller and now we'll make good contact. And you can do a, a decent amount of downward pressure with a roller and that really kind of compacts those layers together. So once it's kind of wet out and you have some squeeze out of epoxy, you can come back with your spreader and pick up that excess epoxy and run it over the top of the surface. And we'll take the excess up here and bring it down there. So from there, I'd wait a few hours uh, or a couple hours until it gets sticky like masking tape. Then I'd come back with my like 800 roller cover, a thin nap roller, and roll the epoxy on and gradually build it up to fill the weave of the cloth. That textured weave, you wanna build it up, rolling it and tipping it until you have a nice smooth epoxy surface, a good base to either sand it and recoat it or paint it or however you're gonna finish it off. So say if you're working with a fiberglass that's heavier than 20 ounces per square yard, one advantage would be to what's called back wetting the surface to do a wet method with wetting out the, the, the side that's gonna make contact with the previous layer or the substrate. So what I'll do is I get the epoxy mixed up. I'll actually take my, my brush and brush epoxy onto the back of the surface. Just a light even coat and onto the substrate, either if it's fiberglass or wood or whatever you're looking to glass. 
The advantage of doing it this way is that now you're getting enough epoxy to permeate up through all the fibers uh, to make it a lot easier to fully wet it out. So now that I come over the top of the surface, you could use a plastic spreader. Um, the other thing too is uh, the groove roller will make good pressure. And with that technique, it uh, reduces the amount of work it's going to take to fully wet it out. So now, as I ro roll my grooved roller over the surface, uh, a lot of the epoxy is coming right up through it, that there's, there's not a lot that needs to be added from the top side here. So this really just saves a lot of time. So we'll brush on just a little bit more of epoxy along this edge here. And from there, it's fully wet out, and then from you would actually just wait until it gets kind of tacky um, or kind of like a soft rubber um, and then recoat it to get a good uh, bond so you don't have to prep the surface at all and just multiple layers of epoxy to kind of fully fill the weave of the fabric. Now that we've worked with lightweight fiberglass cloth and heavyweight glass, I hope you gained some tips on properly wetting out glass. But if you do have any questions, please reach out to us. We have technical advisors that are happy to help. And I wish you the best of luck with your next uh, fiberglass epoxy project. Thanks.